Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Andy. I'm a self-taught software developer and today's video is all about how to get started with building your first application even if you don't quite feel ready yet. Now before we get into this video, I just want you to know that I do have an announcement coming out in probably the next week, maybe two weeks. I've been teasing this announcement for a while so just keep your eyes peeled on my Facebook, Twitter. I will announce it obviously here on my next YouTube channel when it does come out. So building an application. So I put out a video previously about tutorial purgatory and how uh, one of the biggest problems you'll have when you are a beginner or a newbie or even intermediate stage is that you'll tend to watch a lot of tutorials and there are a lot of tutorials out there to watch and it's great, it's great. You can go to Udemy, you can go to Pluralsight, you can go to lynda.com and you just feast your little mind on as many tutorials as you want and this is a great thing because that means that there's a lot of knowledge out there about programming languages and, and programming paradigms and frameworks etc ad nauseum. So while this is a great situation to be in that we have knowledge at our fingertips now, the problem is that we get lost in learning and while learning is a great thing, we all should be learning, the problem is you need to be doing. In other words, you need to be applying that information because an employer is not going to hire you based on your knowledge of programming languages and your knowledge of programming paradigms and your knowledge of some JavaScript framework. They want to know or they want to be able, they want to see that you can demonstrate your skills to use those programming languages, use those frameworks to build applications, to build something using that knowledge. And without that, you are going to have a hard time getting that first job unless you can somehow convince that employer that you are a fast learner and that you will do whatever it takes to figure out how to demonstrate that you can build things. I don't know if that's even possible to be told totally honest. I don't know if there's many employers that are willing to take that risk as someone who can't demonstrate they're willing to build something, but we're gonna teach you how to get started before you even probably feel comfortable building an application. Now, let's take a good example. So let's Let's start small here. Let's say you're a web developer and you just want to start with a small HTML, CSS, and JavaScript application, meaning just something that, that shows a little functionality and maybe is fun to do. So the first thing I did was a JavaScript Tetris game. I detailed that in a previous video, but let's just say that something simple like that. I think uh, uh, one of the, my current students right now is doing a tic-tac-toe game, which is really simple, right? Like that's, that's an application, it's a quote unquote application, but it's a really good place to get started because it's really limited functionality. You know exactly what tic-tac-toe does. Maybe there's a few things you could add. Maybe you could add a score for, uh, you know, every game that you win could be a point. Um, you can let the player decide whether they want to be X's or O's. This is really finite in terms of what the possibilities of the game will be, which is great because if you have a really complex game, that's where things can get a little bit more difficult. But let's talk about how you can get started in that tic-tac-toe game. So the first thing you're going to want to do before you do anything else, at the very least, if you don't really know exactly what you want the game to look like, just sketch out on a piece of paper. Literally take out a piece of paper and sketch out exactly what you want it to look like. Will it be a black background for the game with white outlines for the grid, for the tic-tac-toe grid? Do you want there to be instructions anywhere on the screen? Do you want there to be a score meter or score sort of a component in the HTML page? Just sketch it out. If it's literally just the grids of, of the tic-tac-toe game, then just write that out. Now, the reason I recommend writing that out, having a sheet of paper next to you while you, you, know, while you begin this application is because while you're writing the HTML and the CSS for the, for the basically the, the structure of the game, you're going to want to reference that. You're going to want to look over and look and see, well, oh, I need it to look like this. I need to create a div where the game screen will go. I need to create a div where the instructions will go. I need to create a div where the score will go. Without sort of a concrete blueprint for what you want to build, it's going to, it's going to be, believe it or not, even if it's a simple game like tic-tac-toe, you're going to be sitting there going, well, wait, I could do this, I could do that, I could, you know, add a little, it's almost like uh, making a meal without instructions. You're going to be adding a little bit too much salt. You're not really going to have context for, for how to start with at least the HTML and CSS. Now, once you've completed the HTML and CSS portion of your app or your game or your tic-tac-toe app, let's say, then you want to worry about functionality. Now, this is obviously where things get a little bit more complicated because you're going to start using JavaScript. And I know many of you guys out there are still in the sort of really new stages of learning JavaScript. And so to, to you, the idea of starting with JavaScript when you don't quite know where to start is very overwhelming. But here's actually how you can get started. Now, 
If you've ever heard of pseudocoding before, I think pseudocoding is great. I still use pseudocoding to this day when I am trying to break down a complex problem into its smaller requisite parts. So if I'm assigned a work item and it's something I've never done before, I never freak out because I always know that I, break, I can always just sort of speak out what the functionality is or write it out, right? So I'm like, okay, I need to build a form that takes an information that sends it to a server that and the server validates that information. So like that information right there can give me a, a starting point and we'll literally write that out. And then I'll, as I will take each one of those things that I wrote, each one of those steps that I've wrote out, I will then break that down into its requisite parts as small as I can get. So that way I can literally start bringing it down into a task list. And the same way with a tic-tac-toe game, it's pretty simple, right? Like how do you want the game to function? Now you've got the layout, you've got the style, what do you want to do? When you click one of the boxes, do you want the do you, you want an X to show up? Okay, try that. What does that mean? Break that out into steps. Right, literally, write. You can either write that on a whiteboard, or you can start writing in your code editor. Write comments, say register, click, or you know listen for a click event on any of the boxes. If the there is a click event, show a X image on that box. Then you can write a comment that says after that click event then place a O image somewhere on an open space on that page. Just start with that. Like if you get those two, well really three steps, if you can listen for a click event on any of the boxes, if you can display an X on any of the boxes where the click event occurred, and then immediately after showing that X game piece, you show an O game piece somewhere in an open space, you've now got down three steps, and I almost want to well, I'll guarantee it that you're going to get momentum built up and you're going to start seeing what I'm talking about with the pseudo coding, with the small chunking, with taking little small steps moving forward. And that's how any app is built. Now, think about it. All you really have to think about is that any large application, anything you can think of, was initially probably a lot smaller, first of all, but then even those small little sections of any application were just turned into even smaller work items, which are essentially smaller and smaller steps that all led towards a bigger goal. It's like saying, you know, uh, any, what is that, like one motivational quote, it's like uh, a, a palace or a kingdom is, is, is built one brick at a time. It's the exact same way with software and code. No one starts building a really complex application by just throwing something out there and all of a sudden it, it just appears out of, out of nothing. It, it, it's one piece of code at a time. It's thinking of things into the smallest chunk that you can possible and then going from there, just working on each step. Now keep in mind, this is not going to solve all of your problems in terms of building and certainly if you are new to JavaScript, you're going to run into parts of your pseudocode where you don't know how to proceed. So a good example would be if you don't know where to start with listening for a click event on an HTML page. Well, that's really, you know, maybe you haven't gotten that part. Maybe you've just started learning, you haven't learned the DOM model yet. You've just learned objects, functions, arrays, classes, object prototyping, but you haven't gotten to how JavaScript interacts with the HTML. Well, that's a really good place to either, you can, can go back to tutorials and you can say, all right, I wanna now find the part of the tutorials or the book where they talk about how the JavaScript interacts with the DOM, or maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about. And you just, all you can really do at this point is use Google as your friend, use Stack Overflow as your friend, and actually Google what I just said, say, put in Google, how to listen for a click event in JavaScript. And that can get you get the ball rolling. And really, honestly, that's where a bulk of my learning came from. It started with the head first JavaScript book, but the sort of gaps in my knowledge were filled in by Google when I didn't know how to do something or when I forgot what I had learned in the book and I forgot how to listen for a uh, click event in JavaScript. These, this is really where the glue of your learning will come. And at this point, you know, you should still continue to do tutorials as you're building apps, certainly to learn new things. Like say you want to learn a JavaScript framework like Angular or React, you're going to need that. But once you start to get a little bit of knowledge, you want to apply that knowledge and then use Google to Google and other resources, obviously to fill in that, those, those gaps of information. And literally it's like wash, rinse, repeat over and over and over again to the point where you start just, you know, things start clicking, you start getting epiphanies, you're seeing the, the tutorials you've taken will start making a lot more sense and that information will sink in, it'll cement in, and you'll start actually feeling like a programmer after, well, not after 
sometime, but after you know a long period of time. And really, that's the the key here. So. Uh, if you think that you cannot start building an application because you don't know a lot, I say you can and you should start. And you should start way before you feel comfortable because you might take way too long to start your building your first application when you could have started months earlier and you're gonna hit yourself in the head because you're like, I could have started building things like two or three months ago. So stop wasting time in, in that regard. Anyways, that's all I got. So I hope you liked the video. Go ahead and leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe and hit the bell icon if you wanna get notifications for any future videos I put out. Other than that, um, that's really all I got. So peace out guys.